Hello, I welcome you all. Uh, the problem reads, uh, the pole is subjected to the two forces shown. Determine the components of a reaction of air, assuming it to be a ball and socket joint. Also, compute the tension in each of uh, the guy wires BC and uh, ED. Uh, this problem is coming from uh, the Engineering Mechanics uh, Statics uh, textbook, 13th edition by R.C. Hibela. So we have a pole that is subjected by two forces, force 1 and force 2. But there are also some guy wires that are providing support. Guy wire BC, guy wire BC, and guy wire ED. And we've been told to assume that the support at A is a ball and socket joint. And a ball and socket joint has only three reaction forces. So we expect a reaction in this direction here in the vertical axis along the Z axis, AZ. We expect another reaction along the A X axis, AX. And along AY, I mean along the Y axis is AY. Okay. So we have been asked to find a, 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 X, AY, and AZ. And on top of that, we have been also asked to find uh, the force BC or tension force BC and the tension force uh, ED. Okay. So what do you think we are supposed to do here? Of course. It's a bit of a lengthy uh, procedure, but quite di direct. So what we need to do is uh, just applying the equations of equilibrium, right? So we are going to use vector uh, method, okay? Vector method to calculate all these forces. So we'll say summation of vector forces is going to be equal to zero, okay? And what forces do we have? So we are saying force 1, vector force 1, plus vector force 2, plus vector force BC, plus vector force ED, plus which other force? Okay, plus the reaction force itself at the very point where we have the bow and socket. So we are going to call it vector force A is equal to 0. So we need to analyze this one and also another one which is summation of moments about point A. Okay. And what do we have? We have other one cross product F1 plus R2 cross F2 plus uh, RB. So this is RB here. RB cross FBC plus RE. This is RE, so this is RE here. Okay. Cross RED is equal to zero. So we have R1 is going to be this one here. Okay, and R2 will be at the same point also. Okay, and we have these sets of forces there. All right. So this is these are the two equations that we are going to use. And after we've done so, then we are going to sum up forces in the X, forces in the Y, group them together, forces in the Z. And we'll do the same also, summation of moments along the X and summation of moments along the Y. Okay. And uh, once we've done so, then uh, we are good to go. We are good to go. Of course, we'll not have any moment along the Z axis. So this is what we are going to do. Because it's a lengthy process, so I've done this already in advance, okay? And I'll just run through quickly. So this is what I did, okay? 
we have the reactions here at the bottom which i already showed and i wrote down the coordinates for c coordinates for b coordinates for e and coordinates for a okay and here we have uh, the tension force we are calling fbc and there we have the tension force we are calling fec afed okay and then we have these two forces that i talked about the summation of forces so this one is summation of forces vector forces is equal to zero okay um yeah so summation of forces is equal to zero and then we have uh we start now rewriting these forces uh vector force a okay it is uh, written as follows we have uh, vector force one uh vector force one is uh this one here okay it is just in the z uh, x plane right you've seen it just in the z x plane so along the x axis this component is just going to be equal to uh if you call this as one x okay it's just going to be equal to uh f1 uh f1 cos 45 right and this is what i did and then you are going to have another component down like so and this one is just going to be equal to f1z is equal to uh f1 uh, sine 45 and this is what i wrote there okay and then we do we go to f2 we have f2 when you look at f2 f2 it is here okay here it is so what we need to do is we need to map it upwards okay in the x y plane and then later on map it on the x and then on the y so i would call this component here as f prime okay so my f prime there is going to be equal to f2 uh, f2 cos uh, 20 okay so that it comes in the xy plane all right and then the component along the x-axis is going to be equal to uh, f prime uh, f prime by cos uh, 30 okay and then the component along the y-axis, which is going to be this one here, like so. Okay. Along the y-axis. Okay, this one. This one is just going to be equal to f prime. Um, sine 30. Okay, mind you, f prime is f2 cos 20. And then we'll have another component along the z axis down there okay which is this one this one is just going to be equal to um f2 sine 20 all right and this is what i did here okay this is what i i did here right so we have f2 and then of course for us to find bc we need to find the unit vector along bc all right Okay, the same with ED, we need to find the unit vector along ED and then multiply those unit vectors by the magnitudes in that in those directions. And the magnitude is unknown. It's just in a direction BC, the magnitude is FBC. So I'm saying FBC is going to be equal to, FBC is equal to FBC uh, times unit vector BC. Okay, so we need to find the unit vector, which is this uh, equation. And then for us to find the unit vector, we need to find the position vector, which is just this one there. Then later on, we simplify it. We find the magnitude of uh, the position vector. And there we go, the unit vector, which is written as follows. And then we multiply the unit vector by the magnitude in that direction. Then we have a vector force. We do the same for FED, okay? And these are the steps, right? Okay. So we have ED force ED, which has a non FED. So we have FBC with a non FBC and FED with a non FED. Okay. Mind you, the number of unknowns here, there are five. We have AX, 
AZ, AY, FBC, and FED. So minimum number of equations that we need are five. All right. And these are the ones I showed here, right? It's one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Right. There is no specific order. I'm just counting them, okay? They can be whichever order, right? It can be one, two, three, four, five. All I'm saying is we need at least minimum of five equations for us to solve the five unknowns. So we have all the forces, and once we have all the forces, once we have all the forces, of course, this equation, I already talked about it. I also talked about this summation of moment when we started. All right. So now, um, I brought all the equations here. I mean, the force vectors, okay? A, vector A, force vector A, force vector F, F1, force vector F2, force vector FBC, force vector FED, all right? And what we do now, we are going to get components in the respective directions, okay? In the X direction, in the Y direction, and in the Z direction. Or we are going to apply the equations of equilibrium, okay? So that we realign or rearrange the components, okay? according to the direction so summation of forces in the x direction will get all the components in the x and uh, they are as follows right we do the same for summation of forces in the y we have this expression here summation of forces in the z we have this expression there okay all right so we have three equations okay so we need two more equations so we need now to take moments about point a like we said right we need to take moments about point a Summation of moments about point A, okay? So summation of moments about point A, okay? We have R, F, R1 by F1 plus F. Uh, so we have, uh, this I talked about this, but I'll repeat it again. Okay, we have these reaction forces there, AX, I mean AY, AZ, AX, and uh, uh, AX, AZ, and AY. Right, so we have this, uh, so we have um, this one here. So this one we are saying is R1, position vector R1, which is going to be equal to position R2, which is just going to be equal to just position vector R, because they are all at the same point. And because we have F1 and F2 coming from the same point, we can sum them up together. And this is what we are doing, all right? This is what we are doing here. So we sum these together so that we just use one position vector there so we are summing f1 and f2 and when we do the sum we have f1 there we have f2 when we sum them up then we are going to have this result here and since position vector r1 and r2 are equal we are just going to use one which is just one position vector which is eight in the z direction right so fbc we already calculated it okay i've shown this already we are just bringing it here and we have the position vector which is here okay here okay what is uh, uh the uh, point b here it is r r b we are saying is just going to be equal to 4k okay and then we have ed okay which is just here the first vector and this position vector is just there okay and this position vector R E is just equal to 6K. So we have all the information, right? And then applying this equation, okay? And then expanding it, cross product, okay? And then using the two, okay? Using this two, so we want now to do the calculation. We have this two. So this is the equation, okay? Where we are, are doing the cross product of a position vector by the force at that particular point this is we are taking moments about point a so summation of moments about point a is equal to then we use this two okay we replace all the values nicely in that manner okay we equate them to zero and when we've done the calculation we have uh, this result here all right this result here and then when we simplify this and rearrange moments or okay, components in the x and in the y 
we have summation of forces in the x then we are rearrange components that are in the x we group them together so these are components in the x so these are components for moments and these are components in the y so with these two equations plus c the three equations remember we found the three equations where are they this one's here remember so we have one equation second equation and the third equation and then plus this fourth equation and fifth equation we have now all the equations okay and equation number four and five are much simpler because the unknowns are much lower we only have bc and ed so we can solve the two simultaneously so that we use the result from here to solve the other unknowns in the other three equations so I use substitution here, the two equations here they are. Over okay, here we are. I was able to find what FBC and FED is. Okay. After finding this particular value, I brought the three equations. Remember the three equations? Okay. Because we found FBC and FED, okay, replacing these values in these three equations, I was able to find AX, AY, and AZ. So it's like we found everything. Let me just copy these so that I take them to the next page so that I replace them on this particular uh, figure. Right. Okay. I hope I was not too fast, but we can still go through uh, the video. Okay. Right. So there we go. All right. So let me, I'll, 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 I'll get rid of them. There we go. Let me now replace these values. So we are saying AX here. Okay. This is AX. Let me write them first. We have AX. Uh, we have, I mean, AZ. We have AX. We have AY. Uh, we have uh, here, we are calling it FBC. Okay, I'll use blue for that. And then we have another one there. We are calling uh, the tension force ED, right? So AX, we found our AX as equal to, what is our AX is 32.26 Newtons. Okay, then we have uh, AY. Ay, we found it as 106.58 newtons. And then we have Az, which is equal to 1277.42 newtons. And then we have force ED, force ED, force ED, okay, it's a tension force, is equal to 600 and 28.36 newtons and then we have force uh, bc which is equal to 205.05 newtons okay i guess we are done we are done and i hope the video is helpful let me just get rid of this we are done i think this is about it uh, this is about it. I hope the video is helpful. If it was, give me a thumbs up, share my videos, like uh, my videos, and continue subscribing. Bye-bye, and I'll see you in my next uh, screencast.